What's up, everybody? Dean Rule here alongside Chris Becker with Ocali Sports to cover Oklahoma State's 23-0 win over Texas mm-hmm. Tech. Final road game of the se- regular season yep. for the Cowboys. Chris, what stood out to you? I think it was just other domination, you know, of the defense, the offense, everything. The offense didn't quite click as well as it had in TCU and then Kansas and the previous games, but even then, it was just demoralizing for everything that the Red Raiders tried to do, and the defense shut them out, got the shutout. First time Texas Tech has been shut out here since Scott Frost played quarterback on the opposite side. So, you know, it was just utter domination on all sides of the ball. And it, even when it was 3-0, I don't know if you felt it up there, but even when it was 3-0, it never felt like the game was really going the Red Raiders way. Yeah, you know, I think it was just a, a continuous build upon for the Cowboys' lead, uh, even though – like Casey Dunn said, there were some missed opportunities and those three field goals they kicked, they were all in the red zone and they would have liked them to have been touchdowns. But even then, you know, this game probably easily could have been, you know, 40 to zero, 42 to zero, somewhere up in that range. But regardless, even it's 23 to zero, this game really never felt close. Um, I think the offense have moved, the offense moved pretty efficiently. The defense continued to do what they've done all season long. Um, and it was just yet another impressive resume builder for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Yeah, most importantly, it got them to, it got them to Dallas. You know, where, where our season started is where their season's going to end, uh, or I guess Big 12 season's going to end, rather. And they're going to play for the Big 12 championship. You don't know the opponent yet. You know, you got OU or Baylor, depending on the outcome of next week's Bedlam game and the Baylor game next week. But, you know, it just mean I think it means a lot to these guys. They also talked about it in the post game of, you know, Tay Martin came back for this. Devin Harper came back for this. Christian Holmes didn't speak, but a couple of people spoke on behalf of him. He came back for this. And I think it just means so much to these guys to, to get to Dallas. And, you know, Tyler Lacey, a lot of these guys are from Dallas, the Dallas area. So I think it means a lot for them. And it's going to be a pretty important game for the Cowboy fan base. Yeah, you know, I mean, the Cowboys were the outright winners of the Big 12 title uh, in 2011. They did not compete in the game. That was just given to them. Um, so this is going to be their first ever time in school history competing uh, in the Big 12 championship game. Some other fun stats from the OSU win. This is the first time since November 11th, 1995 against Oklahoma that the Cowboys have shut out a conference opponent. Mm-hmm. Um, Dude, I don't know about you, but I was not watching college football back then. I was not either. I had to look that one up. Um, regardless, you know, another strong win. The Cowboys improved to 10-1. and one. Like you said, Chris, they're the first team to clinch a spot in the Big 12 championship game. Uh, that's going to be decided. The, their opponent's going to be decided next week, either with an OU win or loss in Bedlam. Um, but who stood out to you today? You know, I think it was Tyler Lacey. He didn't have a lot of stuff on the stat sheet, but he, he was constantly in the backfield forcing Donovan Smith to run around. And even he forced a fumble early on that kind of said, like, it, it was already over with, but it just kind of just further, further made the point mute that Tech Stack wasn't coming back. And he was all over the field. He did the, his signature Grand Slam celebration. And Tyler Lacey really stood out all around. He played really well. And, you know, for me, I think the person I like to look to is uh, John Paul Richardson. He kind of mm-hmm. stepped in for Brendan Presley, who was dealing with him some stuff. We don't know yeah. that's severe, but uh, when everybody was talking, it didn't seem like a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, Reese steps in. He gets about four or five receptions. Yep. 50 yards, touchdown, and he also was able to um, almost run pretty much right about where we were standing. He, th- he yeah. double pass, he tries to throw it into the end zone here to Jaden Bray, who slips, loses his shoe, isn't able to come up with it. But, um, yeah, no, you know, I think that they utilized John Paul Richardson a lot more today, and I think it worked out for them. Yeah, you know, John Paul Richardson played, has played pretty well throughout the year. He hasn't gotten, you know, the volume that he probably would have liked or – you know, that he probably deserves but because Brennan Presley's there. But, you know, Brennan Presley didn't play today, or he only played punt return today. And, you know, he, we, even then, we didn't see the normal Brennan Presley on punt return. He didn't return anything. I think he fought, fair caught all of them. So he was just back there to catch the ball. But, you know, JPR was playing really well today, and I think I think that's huge for next year's team. And, uh, you know, Tay Martin has a really quiet 130-yard mm-hmm. game. Um, playing overall, the, the receiver core did pretty well. The running backs yeah. took a little bit to get going. Texas Tech has a better run defense than they do pass defense. Yep. Yes, better run defense than they do pass pass, defense. But um, that was was very evident. They were able to get it going there towards the end when they were just trying to drain clock. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the biggest stat though is that we haven't talked about is Eric Izakama was held to I think two catches for six yards. Yeah. And he didn't. He had one. His first catch came early in the fourth, and then a second catch didn't come until like I think eight minutes or four minutes left in the game. He picked up six yards and he had like ten targets. So he's a big receiver in the Big Twelve, and LSU completely just shut him down. 
Well, Chris, do you have anything else to say? I don't. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. I'm Dean Rule alongside Chris Becker with Ocali Sports. We will see you next week for our coverage of Oklahoma State versus Bedlam. Thanks for watching.